Is gravity a force? It's a question that some flat earthers, among them notably Sleeping Warrior and Reiji, made something like their catchphrase recently. Especially Sleeping Warrior seems to think he's being clever when he's asking it over and over again and not getting a straight answer. I'm not going to give you a yes or no answer either. In fact, I believe such an answer to this question doesn't even exist. What I'm going to do instead is explain why this question isn't even a scientific one, and hopefully also shed some light on what science is in the process, as there seems to be some misconceptions about that as well. For those of you who are not aware, here is a short summary of the issue. Flat earthers like Sleeping Warrior and Reiichi took note of the fact that physics has two ways of treating gravity. Newton's theory and Einstein's general relativity. Newton describes gravity in terms of forces. Einstein does away with this notion and explains gravitational phenomena purely in terms of the curvature of space-time. So now the reasoning of flat earthers goes something like this. Newton said that gravity is a force, Einstein said that it isn't. Scientists seem to accept Einstein's view, so that means gravity isn't a force and Newton was wrong. But then why is his theory still being taught? Why are people still talking about the force of gravity? And if there isn't a force, how can objects accelerate? The problem is, this is the result of attempting to draw philosophical conclusions from scientific theories. But science doesn't provide answers of philosophical nature. It can't answer questions about what aspects of reality are. It only answers questions like, what will happen if I do this? In order to better understand this, let's imagine reality as a mysterious machine. Like a black wall with lots of buttons, knobs and levers. We can manipulate these buttons, knobs and levers however we want, and we, op we can observe what the machine does afterwards, but we have no way of looking inside and inspecting the actual mechanisms. Science is how we approach learning to operate this machine. Since the mechanisms of it are inaccessible and there are no manuals, our only course of action is to push the buttons, turn the knobs, pull the levers, then watch what happens and look for patterns. Then we can try to imagine what is going on inside. Say that we observe that every time we push the blue button and then pull the red lever, we get electrocuted. We can imagine that the blue button turns on some generator, and then the red lever closes the circuit, electrocuting us. But there are many alternative hypotheses. Maybe it's the other way around. Or maybe the power source is running constantly and the blue button deactivates some safety precaution. We can't look inside the machine to confirm if what we imagine is true. We can only figure out what we should expect the machine to do if we are right, and check if this happens. For example, if the blue button turns on a generator, another combination of buttons that turns on a light bulb should only work after the blue button is pressed, and not before. Unless, of course, the light bulb has a separate power source. But maybe this possibility can be ruled out some other way etc, etc. The more we play with the machine, the more different behaviors we discover. Sometimes by accident, sometimes by extrapolating from patterns we observed. For example, we might have observed that the more times we press the blue button, the stronger the electrocution after we pull on the red lever. So we figure that the blue button builds up the charge, and maybe if we build up enough of it, another lever that seemed to do nothing will actually activate something that simply required a big charge to operate. To keep track of what happens under what circumstances, we draw a hypothetical blueprint. This blueprint is a record of what we imagine the inside of the machine is like, and it allows us to reason about the machine's behavior. But no version of the blueprint is final, no matter how much data we collected, there are still buttons that nobody touched yet. And when somebody presses them, it might invalidate parts of what we drew. And this is why it should never be interpreted as a map of what the machine is actually like inside. It is just a concise summary of everything we learned about the machine, a useful model. But that is all. It is only to be used to figure out which buttons to press, which knobs to turn and which levers to pull, in order to achieve the desired effect. This is how science works. We push the buttons and turn the knobs of reality by building measuring instruments and setting up experiments. 
we observe the effects by taking readings of the measurements. We build a blueprint of what we think reality is like in the form of theories. We test the blueprints by making predictions and performing more experiments. But no matter how much data we gather, we have no way of opening reality up, looking inside and seeing if our blueprints match what's there. We can only judge by how well they predict reality's behavior. Now, gravity is just a word for a set of knobs and buttons we observe to behave in some specific way. Newton's theory is Newton's blueprint for how he imagined this part of the machine to work. This worked well enough for centuries until people started pushing some buttons nobody pushed before and noticed that the machine is performing slightly off relative to what Newton's blueprints suggest. So they set out to draw better ones. Eventually Einstein proposed a new blueprint which looks completely different from Newton's but the functions of most buttons remain the same, with some minor changes that make this blueprint better for predicting the machine's performance. So, is gravity a force? The question doesn't really make sense. Gravity is a phenomenon, something the reality machine does, and force is just the name of a part that appears in some places in our reverse-engineered blueprints. Newton used this part in his blueprints for gravity, Einstein didn't. We know that Einstein's blueprints predict the machine's behavior better than Newton's, but that doesn't mean they match what is actually inside. The actual mechanisms could be completely different. We have no way of looking inside to check. Still, they allow us to operate the machine successfully, and that is what we are the most interested in. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.